You're listening to the 40 Fit Radio Podcast, dedicated to the 40-plus community. Join us as we discuss the truth about fitness and health using science, reason, and the experiences of our host and content experts. Welcome to the 40 Fit Nation. Hey, welcome back to 40 Fit Radio and welcome back to the 40 Fit Nation. I'm your host, Coach D. I'm here with Trent also. Coach Trent. <laughs> Coach Trent. Coach Trent to <laughs> you. <laughs> kind of messed up that, <laughs> Coach Trent. Uh, but hey, uh, welcome back today, guys. We're going to talk real quickly today, a short podcast on just some insights that we've had during this quarantine time. And uh, we just want to take the time to, to talk about, you know, some of the things that we've been thinking about through the quarantine fitness time through not being able to, for some members, not being able to come into the gym. And what we've seen post-quarantine is really, really interesting. And I um, I first want to preface this by saying, I know, I know that uh, for our brothers and sisters out there who have gyms, who have had facilities and have not made it through this, um, this time as a business, um, uh, we're saddened by that because I believe that it, every time a gym closes down, it closes down a positive influence for a local community to get uh, in better shape, to be healthier, which helps the collective as a whole. It helps yeah. makes yeah. makes the community healthy as whole. And there's a big trickle down effect when that occurs, when people get in shape, when they take a hold of their fitness and health and they take responsibility for that. And so for those of you that have lost your, your businesses and lost your gyms during this time, our hearts and prayers uh, are with you. And uh, we hope that you find another venue to express your uh, professional and technical expertise as a fitness coach or a strength coach or whatever you do in the health and fitness uh, arena. So we just wanted to say that first because, because I know there's a lot of gyms that have not fared well during this time and they don't exist anymore. Um, we've also got a lot of turmoil in the fitness industry right now just because of everything that's gone on between COVID-19 and also with some of the, the racial, t- racial tensions that we have in our country right now. Um, certain leaders within certain fitness movements are, are taking the hit right now. And uh, in, in many ways, they should. Um, I think we need to be compassionate to one another. Uh, we need to seek to value all people in all settings, all walks of life, all classes, all colors, all creeds. And we need to be aware that, that our number one job as strength coaches is to get you strong and get you fit. No matter where you come from, no matter what color you are, no matter what your race creed is, I don't care. I just want to get you stronger. (laughs) That's it. That's right. And so, um, so we're going to talk a little bit about some of these insights that we've had and And I just like to say first, one of the things that we've noticed in our gym post quarantine is a, is a spike in membership. Yeah. Um, we're actually, I think at or above the remote and membership count that we were prior to COVID-19. Now we have a very small private gym. We don't look for numbers. It's not something we push. We don't market hard. We don't, you know, this is something that, that Trent and I both provide at Fort Worth Strength a starting strength affiliate because we are passionate about do it, doing it. Uh, we can make, we can make a living doing it. And, uh, we also like the private environment that we have. Yeah. So it didn't take a ton to get us above those numbers, but what we're seeing is a, is an influx of people that want to take charge. Yeah. And so one of the insights I have about the whole quarantine thing is, is that I think when stuff hits the fan, when catastrophe happens, People realize or should realize what they really can control and what they really can't. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the one thing that you can help to control is your health and fitness. Yes. It's the one thing that you can take charge of and that you can do that can impact every aspect of your life. So what one of the insights that we've had is that we've seen an increase in involvement, an increase in engagement. And that also means an increase in personal responsibility to get the work done. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, I think, yeah, I mean, it's sometimes disasters and catastrophes and things like that reveal to us how little we have, how little control we have over certain elements of our life. And so that can, that can 
you know, lead us to, to figure out where we can double down on the things we do have control over. I think the other thing, one thing I've noticed in just asking people that have come from quarantine where they weren't able to train, the whole family was home, which maybe that wasn't the case previously. Everyone was going to work or school and yeah. now they're all together, all, all at home is um, the importance of a of habits and scheduling. And we talk about all the time that habits are the foundation of what we do. We're here to build good habits because habits stick with you for years and years and years. You can't white knuckle your way through anything right, right. for more than a few weeks. Right. And so um, training and getting back to the gym and having a program that's structured, that has a progression built into it, has actually helped bring accountability to these these members. And I think that's part of the reason why we've had such a good return rate for the clients that have had to lay off and come back is that, man, the gym, coming to the gym right. and having a logical program gives them accountability. It gives them um, structure to their day. It's it's how they start off every mm-hmm. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or whenever they come in. Sure. And it it also is the thing that drives their the way that they feel through the day. Right, right. right. You know, it, it brings, sets the tone. It sets the it tone. It sets the tone. Brings their energy levels yeah. up. They're taking, like you said, they're taking the reins of their, you know, in control of their health and fitness. So all those things are just a lot of positive things. It puts their mindset in a good space, and it gives them some actual real results that they can build on. So I think that's one thing is that you know, kind of having having your schedule forcibly turned completely upside yeah, yeah. down and having to kind of figure out what the foundation of that schedule was yeah. and those habits were is is a good thing. Well, and I think I think being able to get back in the gym and create some sense and I'm going to use a term in air quotes normalcy is important because it it kind of sets everything back in place. Like yeah. being able to go back to work, go back to your actual office or go back to your actual plant or wherever you work, you know, being able to get back into the gym and and get back into a routine, um, you know, it, it's what helps you be effective. And like you said, habits are, are what everything is based on. And when you feel like your habits have been turned upside down, you then within that upside down environment, try to figure out some sense of normalcy to reestablish those habits. And then to be able to get back into that old environment is refreshing. Even though it's the old environment, it's refreshing when you haven't been there. And so I think that building a sense of normalcy to your schedule is empowering it. it um, and like you said, it kind of sets the stage or the tone for that day, uh, several days, and then that week. Right. And just feeling like you're back engaged and you're doing which one of the things I noticed about this whole deal was just a sense of limbo. Yeah. I think right now people have a sense of limbo. They're like, okay, what will happen this summer? Can we travel? Can we fly? What will happen this fall? Will kids go back to school? Will events start back up? Will professional sports start back up? Which is, in my mind, not as important as anything. <laughs> but um, what will happen if this and that? I mean, you know, we have a ranch and, and we see a lot of stuff out in the ag world. Yeah. You know, what's going to happen with the meat packing plants? There's a lot of sense of uncertainty. So I believe that it's really powerful for individuals to take control of the things that they, they can not worry or be anxious about the things that they can't and then do whatever you do within your mindset and your spirit and your habits to ensure to yourself that you have hope for the future. For me, that's a religious experience or a spiritual experience that I know that I don't control everything in my destiny. I I wish I could say that every man is in control of everything (laughs) of his destiny, but that's not true because you can be driving down the highway and be hit by a semi and die. Right. So we, there are a lot of things outside of our sphere of control. So all we can do is um, act upon the things that we can control and the, the habits that we have. And I think that's powerful for us to do that. Absolutely. So. Yeah. You know, I'm doing online great books. And recently we read Prometheus Bound by Aeschylus. And I thought it was really interesting. I didn't know what to do with this piece of the book at first, but it's kind of all coming into place, falling into place for me now. So Prometheus is this Titan. So he kind of predated Zeus and the gods and Zeus chained him to a rock because among other things, Prometheus gave fire and crafts to man, to mortals. The other thing he did was he took away man's foreknowledge or foresight of his own death. So in other words, in the myth, before Prometheus, humans were aware of their mortality. Right, right. And they lived with that every day, every Scary. moment. <laughs> and he took that away. 
Yeah. And of course, we all know we're mortal. We know right. we're going to die someday. Yeah, but, 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 but we it put that in the back of our head. That's right. It doesn't consume our thoughts every day. And, yeah. and so he actually... Because we live right now. Our reality is living. We are in the present right. moment. Not dying. You know, but hopefully, we know most of the time. Yeah, that's right. And so that actually that actually gives a lot of freedom to, to man because it, it frees us to go and live and take risks and do things yeah. and accomplish things, which we probably couldn't if we had this crippling sort of, you know, shadow hanging over <laughs> right. what we knew was our future. Um, and so I think it's really interesting. Sometimes um, things like this make you realize what's important right. and what things are valuable and actually bring you value and life and energy right. and happiness and things that don't. And, um, you know, I know for me, I drove a lot less when I was during the quarantine. Sure. Our gym sure. was locked down, so I yeah, wasn't yeah, even driving up home. here to Keller. We were close. And uh, I realized, like, man, spending time in the car that I don't have to commuting yeah. because we live in a giant Metroplex. Not good. Right. It takes away from my life and adds right. nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> so to spend as much time as I can to really be, um, be thoughtful about my schedule as we come back to the gym, right. we have all these new people. I've been more thoughtful about how I'm structuring my time coaching and being efficient with that because that means I'm spending more time at home where I'm doing things like reading, hanging out with my wife, yeah. and my dogs, Sure. Um, outside grilling and right. just talking lifting. and hanging out, lifting, lifting training, right. right? So all those things are great. They bring me life. Anytime I'm spent commuting in the car. Yeah. Pfft, yeah. Right. It's a waste it's a of necessary time. necessary evil, yeah. but, but it's, yeah, you know, I mean, there's a lot of That's life. one, one example. Right. And there's a lot of life activities that are just, they're, they're purposeful, but in the big scheme of things, if you could do it another way, it'd be better. <laughs> they can become filler but, if you're not yes. careful. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're not careful, they, they consume a lot of your time, a lot of your yeah. pr- productivity, too. But you can be productive during those times, too. I'll tell you one insight I've had, and I've noticed about you in particular, Trent, is that I've noticed that you seem in the last quarter to be more purposeful about where you're going. <laughs> where yeah, you're taking yeah. you and Jordan, where y'all are going, you seem more purposeful. You seem more driven to take the next step and then the next step. And that is so key in personal development is us being engaged in, in taking the next step of development. I, it's really funny. I'll get friends and mine and buddies around me. They're like, man, you're always doing something. You always got your hand in this. You always got your hand in that. And, and that's because I'm I, in some ways, if I'm not careful, I can be I can be very ADD about um, uh, activities and everything's everything around me because I always want to be doing something new. Yeah. So I've got to be careful that too, to not get so wrapped up in the tyranny of the, tyranny of the urgent that I don't do the important things too. But I but I also find that that I'm always about you know that next step of development, that next step of personal, professional, business, whatever it is development. And I see that sense of purposefulness in you. So one of the things that I've I've noticed about people is, is that sometimes something hard like this, which by the way, guys, you know, unless you got COVID-19, unless you're struggling with the loss of a job. And I mean, those are, those are hard things, man. And obviously the loss of a loved one, that's a terrible thing to have happen. But, but I also think that, that Michelle right now is reading a book about the Dust Bowl about the the history of the Dust Bowl. You st- she was reading me some lines from that book the other day this weekend. I was like, oh my gosh, it's just what a terrible catastrophe to happen to this nation, you know, in the in the 20th century. There there are some terrible things that have happened to this country and around the world in the last hundred years. And so th- sometimes these hard things, these things that are really, really tough to go through are so emancipating in regards to taking that next level of step of growth. Yeah. To yeah. to being a catalyst, you can allow it to be something that just crushes you or can you can allow it to be something that catapults you to that next level of growth and idea. You know, um, what is it? Necessity is the mother of invention, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. when you have a great need, you you put up or shut up. That's you make right. a decision to either create or 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 uh, be crushed, basically. Absolutely. I think it's interesting that you said that I'm at least outwardly becoming more purposeful. Yeah. Um, because I mean, you're always I find, purposeful, but you know well, what I mean? Well, you know, I find, I found seem that to be more envisioned. momentum matters yeah. a lot oh, here. Yeah, so, yeah. so when I first started strength training, seriously, I didn't have a lot of purpose. I had a lot of things that I was doing, but again, a lot of it was filler because I hadn't really yeah. evaluated like whether they were really that valuable to my life or not. And then, I think especially it's the 
it's those things like I was talking about with the driving. That's kind of a, a mundane thing, but that's the whole point. It can fill up a lot of your life if right. you're not careful. And it's neither. It's not really. It's not a vice. It's not bad. Right. Right. It's not like you know doing hard drugs or whatever. Right. But it does fill up life, and it can overtake that. That in itself can be a, a thing that sure. that takes away. It, that's um, easy for those things to get out of control. But I think it's interesting. So that was the start for me of making a very purposeful change to do something hard that I also brought me a lot of value. Right. And and um, from there, you know, I've made huge changes in my career, my jobs. And I find that the more often I do those things, the less scary it is to do the next thing. Yeah. It's still yeah, always, absolutely. there's still always, because you're always stepping into uncertainty when you change yeah. from what you know and what you're doing now. And, you know, there is no guarantee, especially when you're business people or you're running your own business like we are, right. there's no guarantee that anything's going to work. Right. Maybe you do everything right and you still fail. That's always a possibility. But I find the more that I do scary things like that, the easier they are to do the next one. Right. You know? And, you know, and another insight. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. The, another insight that I've had that's kind of interesting and, and um, some of you guys may agree or to disagree or disagree with me on this, but is that I've noticed that there's kind of two different. I mean, there's obviously responses to the quarantine and COVID and, and everything else we have going on, too, right now with the 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 George Floyd incident and everything else in our country that we're going through. There's responses on both sides. I don't want to say both sides of the aisle because I don't think it's political, but there's there's two real main responses. One is everything's broke. Everything's falling apart. Everything is in shambles. Nothing matters. We have to build totally new. And then the other response is um, I've seen hard before. I've seen hard times. I've got good habits. I'm going to stay the course. I'm going to make changes where needed through insight and a sense of self-awareness and self-inspection or inspection of my surrounding community or the way I interact with my community. But overall, I'm going in the right direction. And sometimes I just need a little redirection. And, and in other words, what I'm saying basically is this, what I see with different types of individuals is some people have fallen apart during this. Time. Yeah. Right. Right. And some people are emboldened, emboldened with the idea that I have habits that I can rely on and I have first principles that I can rely on and I'm going to rely on those things. And yet at the same time, be compassionate with those around me, be thoughtful and be purposeful about where I'm going in life and reassess that right. to see if I can use this opportunity to become better at who I am in all aspects of my life. Yeah, yeah. And so there's really two, when you think about yes, it, I mean, yeah. if you have friends and family members, you have people that they're just, they're just upside down with this. Right, right. And then you have other people that are, that are, that are going to take this and recognize that even though these are terrible events, terrible things happening, we have a choice here. We either move backwards or we destroy something thinking that it has no value or we make what we have better. And I believe that's the path. I believe we we I believe we have some good foundational things in the health and fitness world that we can help our members with it, within our communities, but I also think that that there are some things that we need to rethink a little bit. Yeah, definitely. And there are some things that we need to make some radical changes in. But I I I hate the statement, but I love the statement too. When it comes to health and fitness, you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> right. When right. it comes to our communities, you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. And so um, I think we've got to be real careful in this health crisis and in the situations we're in to not knee-jerk reaction and act only with our emotional minds, but also act with our logical thinking mind. So right. both of them combined in a well-balanced um, reaction to this whole quarantine and everything around us. Yeah. And, and, you know, to that point, I think one of the things that health and fitness does for us, or rather what health and fitness is, is it's a concrete thing. It's a thing you have to do in the physical world. And that is really important because a lot of the issues that we're talking about as a society right now that we're struggling with are, and I want to be careful how I say this, they're abstractions to some of us. Now, I realize when I say that there are some people who have real physical right, right. issues too going on in the world that they're that they're struggling with. Right. I don't want to dismiss that, but 
there are things about like politics and how you structure society and like you know how do you make the right how do you change things how do you affect change what's the best way a lot of these things are abstract concepts right. that are that are not concrete in the sense that that they have concrete impact on the world but they are themselves abstract ideas right whereas right. health and fitness these are these are concrete things you have to go and actually interact with the world around you to get healthy and get fit within, to exercise within the body of knowledge that we presently have right we know that there are some things that work and some things that don't that don't and so it is an area of of uh, control yes and it is an area of impact that we can see some cause and effect right you know and, it, and it's something you have to go and like if you're going to lift a barbell or you're going to go run or you're going to go swim or whatever you have to actually go and and move your right. body and interact with with the real world. Right. And I say that because I think one of the one of the things that we're all struggling with to some degree is like in what the to quarantine, do next? we get up all up in our heads <laughs> yeah, and we yeah, just yeah. spin around in circles yeah. and it's and these difficult, difficult problems that we're grappling with. Right. And sometimes you have to to be a complete human being, you have you can't ignore that physical side of you right. that needs to actually go out and do right in the, the real world, so to speak. Well, well I find that people that, you know, over the years treating people, people that are really unhealthy or they have significant physical problems when they can realize that their actions matter and they have a real way that they can impact their daily health yeah, or their daily yeah. fitness, it's very empowering. I had a conversation yesterday with a patient. She's a back patient and, and she's very frustrated because she's having a lot of back and leg pain and she may have to have surgical intervention. Uh, we tried conservative care with her. We've tried injections, pain management, a lot of different things. But she's all up in her head, too, about it because she's like, well, it doesn't sound like surgery could be the answer to my problem. There's no 100% answer. Right, right. And she's like, well, you had surgeries and you didn't get better. And then you had another surgery and you didn't get better. And you had your last surgery. And she's like, and you still have some back and leg pain? I said, yes, I do. But I learned how to manage it. Yeah. And I work through that. It's not a perfect world. It's, it's you know, it, it, people want this perfect utopic setting or environment to come out of there. Uh, your financial life's not like that. Your physical life, your spiritual life, your emotional life. Yeah. The, you know, we work through this process day in, day out, and we work at it. We act upon it. It's a verb. Life is a verb. Yeah. It's action oriented. And so what I, what I told her was, I said, stop worrying about the things you can't control. I mean, I literally said that to her. I said, I said, so-and-so stop worrying about the things you can't control. One of the challenges that you're having is you're developing a high anxiety level, a high worry level, and then that is influencing your pain you're experiencing too because it, it emotionalizes that pain even more and it throws it yeah. into your limbic brain. It throws it into the part of your brain where you feel emotions, where right. pain is interpreted, and it bathes that pain in emotion, more emotion. I was like, one step at a time, one day at a time, one act at a time, and have hope for the future and do the things that you can do. Yeah. I think that's what people need to learn about this whole quarantine thing too. And coming out of it is, is that none of us can predict the future. I could drive out of here today and so could you, and we could get hit by a semi. Boom. We're done. I hope that the last few minutes of my life will have been impactful. Right. right. We'll have, we'll have made a difference for myself and my family and someone else. And so I think that's, one of the insights that I've had is that people are worrying about, they're anxious about, you know, the things, but, but, um, I think what I do when I get anxious is I recognize how little uh, it's, it's, it does just the opposite for me Yeah, yeah. to recognize how little control I have is, in, is powerful to me. Yeah, for sure. Because I rely on my creator. I, I rely on the things I know I cannot control. And I recognize that, that, to be honest with you, I don't have any responsibility there. I can't. Right. I, right. You know, all I can do is control the things and act upon the things that I know that I've been given the opportunity and the self-governance to act upon. Yeah. And that's another insight that I've had. I think that that's very, very powerful for us. You know, how many times have you sit there, sat there with a client who wants to change their physical fitness of their life, but they're not willing to do the work to do it? Right. It's so frustrating. <laughs> a lot, yeah. I mean, and the, and the thing is, like, I'll usually point to people, you know, it, it depends on the person, but sometimes I'll point to other people in the gym and be like, you know, the difference between, it, this is especially talking to somebody who's who's not getting the results they thought they were going to get. I'm like, the difference between you and 
so-and-so over there is they just keep showing up every day. It's yep. their habits. It's not about crushing this workout or the next one right. or being a hero for two weeks and then laying off. They just keep coming back. The key to they your have success. good days and bad days, but they just keep showing up. I used to tell my girls growing up all the time because I heard this quote, the key to your success is hidden in your daily routine. Yeah, 100%. It's just 100%. hidden in your daily yep. routine. And I, and that's because they they respond to these issues of anxiety and, yeah. and external problems in the world by acting. They yeah. go do. That's their response. And I think that's the best medicine I know of for when you get too wrapped up in your head and thinking about stuff is you just got to go do something. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think coming out of all this stuff, if I could just leave one thought with our, with our audience today, and that would be number one, try not to be emergent in a knee jerk reaction on anything that's going on in our world right now, other than for your own safety or, or, or self-preservation right yeah. now. <laughs> um, but try, try not to, to act with your emotional mind Immediately, you know, there's an old scripture that says, "Be slow to speak and quick to listen." And I also think what that really says to us is, is sometimes we need to think about what we do before we do it. And I am just as guilty as anyone else in being reactant instead of um, uh, being proactive or responsible in my actions, just being fully reactive. So. And I think that comes with emotional maturity and experience mm. over time and, and learning. And But number one, try to act less with your emotional mind um, emergently. Number two, um, use logical thinking and rationing through this process of the quarantine and our, our present surroundings. Be, be thoughtful. Think about, you know, how you should respond and how others are responding around you. Also look beyond the surface, look a little deeper in everything. When someone tells you, you know, you have to do this to quarantine, you have to do that. I'm not saying don't, don't be compliant in areas of safety and other things, but just think with your own mind too. You know, we're not thought robots. You know, we, we, we don't have to do everyone tells what everyone tells us to do if it's not rational and logical. Right. Now, be willing to take the consequences if you don't, but but be logical and rational, too, and think with your rational mind. But lastly, but not least, um, have hope for the future, but also learn from the past. Yeah, yeah. Learn from the past. Learn from the situations where humanity is gone that have been really bad places and learn from uh, learn from historical events, guys. If we forget what's happened in the past, I mean, thinking about things like the Dust Bowl and Vietnam yeah. and the Civil Rights Era and World War One, World yeah. War Two, Korean War, you know, Civil War, all these different events, we can learn something from Absolutely. those events historically. The the Peloponnesian War. Go read some Thucydides, right? Athens yeah. and Sparta, right? Yeah, you're going um, way back. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? The, the, like first, a it wasn't that long ago. That's right. B yeah, those in, are in the, the of humanity. same exact humans. Walking yep. around then as they are today, and the problems are all the same, right? Yep. It's it's funny, Absolutely. you know. Yeah, yeah. We we you know one of the things I think the younger generation needs to do now is recognize how powerful it is to learn from the past. It's not old fashioned. It's not old all old fashioned. Yeah, there's a lot there, of higher ideals and advanced thinking. Even more so probably in the past, even yeah. though we live in the information age. We think we're enlightened and everything else, but yeah, there's we a have, lot of value it, in the it's, past. It's stunning to me. Part of, part of the attraction to some of the ancient thinkers is it's, it's stunning how, in terms of just pure data and facts, how little they knew compared to what we have now. And how wise they were. And yet how incredibly far they yeah. were able to take yeah. that using just the tools of their mind. Sure. You know, um, it's, sure. it's stunning. Um yeah, maybe they relied on actual thinking instead of. Well, I think that's the thing, things. right? They didn't. They didn't have a flood of data yeah. and and info. You know, attainment information and facts. overload, computers thinking all. They for also us. didn't need it, right? right. It, it, that would have only gotten in the way, right? So, yeah, no, that's good. Well, hey guys, thanks for joining Forty Fit Radio today and just listening to some general insights on on what we've been thinking about. Um, it's been a tough time. It's been difficult also just to kind of continue to present what we wanted to present in health and fitness. We hope we've done that with you. But if you need to connect with us, uh, you can email us at info at 40fit.com. You can go to our Facebook page, 40 Fit Nation. You can also go to Instagram at 40 Fit Radio. We'd love to hear from you, comments, concerns, questions. We're getting more interaction on our Facebook page, getting more interaction on Instagram. Uh, but also email us. We'll try to respond as quickly as possible. 
Uh, thanks for being with us today, guys, and thanks for joining the 40 Fit Nation over and out. Thanks, guys.